Welcome back to the channel guys. Um, as you can see, and if you follow me on Instagram, here lately I've been painting uh, hard baits, some crank baits. Here we got square bill. Before I got the lip masked off. Um, I did this here, <laughs> somewhere in here, this paint booth, out of uh, some foam board, duct tape, and then uh, got these nifty little lights that you can see on the inside, which are kind of blue. I thought they were supposed to be white, but I got them on Amazon for like $10, this LED tape light. Don't really like it because of the colors. I mean, you can set the mood, but not for painting. So I had this here light and I just stuck it up there with those like Velcro 3M strips. And it pretty much gives me enough light to paint this here bait. So I'll add in just a second some of the pictures of the baits I've made here recently. Um, yeah, this is a square bill. I have uh, a jerk bait. Have some type of deep water, like a bandit. And I have another bait over here. It reminds me of like a chopo. Not quite a whopper flopper, but I think that's what they try to claim it is. But it's more like a chopo, Berkeley chopo. But <clears throat> anyhow. I'm going to uh, do my best to not necessarily replic replicate a bass, but do my own spin on a baby bass look. I've done one before. I like, love the way it turned out. And we'll do a set of baits here for a uh, local fundraiser. So um, hopefully they turn out well. People enjoy them. They buy them or, you know, bid on them for a decent amount of money, and uh, we raise money for a good cause, the Jackson County Sportsman's Federation. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see if we can learn a few things together along the way. I showed you my booth, but actually I want to show you a few little items I have. These are helping hands, helper hands, something like that. Um, you have these little clips on the end. You can buy these at like Harbor Freight for five or six dollars. I think Amazon has them really cheap. They're really handy. You just clip on your uh, bill and you can manipulate this. I mean, pretty well any way you want it flip them around and uh, kind of, you can see me turning there. Anyway, to get the angles you need when you're painting. The next thing I want to show you is I have this here. This is Neo for Iwata. I got this at um, Hobby Lobby. I think it was around $70. I bought a, originally bought a cheap airbrush on Amazon. It was like one of those, um, battery operated that you didn't have to have uh, air supply and it was a cool idea it seemed great um, worked for one bait started having issues clogged won't spray right did my best to clean it out I've cleaned this one several times and I had an issue with it so that one um, yeah not I wouldn't buy one of those again but I did buy it from Amazon, my air compressor. This is just a cheap little quiet air compressor. I don't even know if it has a name to it. But I got it from Amazon, and it's for, like, makeup airbrushing. Um, you can regulate your pressure right here. And I run about 25 PSI or so. And this thing's done great so far, and it's really quiet. I run it here in the upstairs bedroom or guest room which is right down the hall from our master bedroom and the wife doesn't hear it. I do this late at night because I'm a night owl. Also, the, uh, I got bags of, of blanks. And you can see some of the stuff on the table here. My buddy Evan painted this. This was his first and he wanted to kind of do something a little different there. So, pretty cool little bait. Anyhow, so you need those. Sorry, I'm bouncing around everywhere looking for stuff. 
you also need paint. Uh, my airbrush paint. I also bought this at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can get it on Amazon as well. Um, I use Kratex. Um, yeah, I got these little totes at the Dollar Store, the Dollar Tree, Dollar Twenty Five Tree, whatever it is in your area, and uh, I just keep my paints in them. So, all kinds. Of, this is kind of my orange, red, brown. Some I have a some Candy Two O that I got from. Sorry, that was very off focus. Candy Two O that I got at Hobby Lobby. But yeah, I use all Createx paints. Those run you. Wow. Sorry, I somehow cut that off, but those run somewhere around four or five dollars a bottle, let's see. Or six forty nine a bottle. You can usually find this stuff on sale at Hobby Lobby if you watch for it. So <clears throat> same with the airbrush. I think you can find it at Hobby Lobby. Also, I got this at Hobby Lobby. I haven't finished it up yet. But uh so when you get done with your paints or painting your baits, you're gonna need to epoxy somehow. Uh, a lot of guys are using UV light and UV epoxies. I'm using the A and B from um, aluminum light. And the best way to, when you cure it, is to keep it rotating so it self levels. And I bought this for maybe $20. This is for those uh, tumblers that women are making all over the internet. And it's so they can spin their uh, epoxy on it. Well, I want to drill a couple holes, put some clips on there, mount my baits to it you know, the clips, and that way I can set my epoxy that way. Also, another thing, a hair dryer. I don't know, I have one around here somewhere. Here you go, Conair air dryer, five or $10 at the dollar store. Um, anything I can buy at the dollar store for my little hobbies, I will definitely do. Um, no sense in spending big money on you know, I'm gonna use that hair dryer for five seconds at a time to uh, quickly dry the paint. He said it. Also, these little clips here, Dollar Tree. Uh, this type of fabric I use for stenciling. That came from Joanne Fabrics. So it was like a few dollars for a yard. And I'm literally cutting little pieces off just to cover my baits. So it's gonna last forever. Um, masking tape, I got super glue for the eyes, little scissors. Um, really, the biggest thing is gonna be your airbrush and air compressor. And if you shop around on Amazon or check out for deals on like at Hobby Lobby, you can come out pretty good. Maybe even Harbor Freight. I've never tried anything from there as airbrush wise, but you know, I'm not against Harbor Freight. So I want to take you along on this journey. Hopefully you pick up a thing or two if you're kind of uh, giving this an, a chance. And we'll quit rambling, we're going to paint. So the first paint we're going to use is an opaque white. Give it a good shake, 30 seconds or so. And you're going to drop about uh, six or eight drops of this straight into your gun. No really reason to reduce this paint. Uh, you can reduce it, but I don't. And you're going to coat the entire crankbait with opaque white. This is your first base coat. And this is going to help the other colors pop. Plus, you will have a white belly and such on the bass. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a win-win. Yeah, it won't really focus, but uh, there we go. You can see there's kind of a good uniform coat. There may be a little splatter or two in there, but nothing major. Also, I have this tray over here that I keep my paints in as I use them, because I go back to a collar or need to do a little touch up. So yeah, one uniform collar. Don't forget it to get between the bill and the nose there. Kind of reposition it to get there and underneath the belly. Get all the way around. So after a heat set, this is ready for the next uh, coat of paint. I cleaned up my brush. Next is, is going to be this uh, pearlized pearl copper Createx. And I'm just going to run this straight up from the nose all the way back to the tail. 
I'm gonna let it kind of overspray onto the shoulders a little bit. Um, yeah. And what I will do when I spray this is I will start the spray about here and bring it up and over. So that way you don't get, see how I got a little blotch here? That's from starting my brush right, right on the paint. I don't like that. Good thing is I'll be able to cover that up. So yeah, I'll start a little low, bring it up and over. So that overspray onto the shoulders. And this is my, uh, I'm just, now I'm starting to layer colors for texture. So, yeah, stay with us. You can see I did get a little spit there. I'm not sure something's going with the airbrush. It's going out a little bit too much. Then I brought down over the eyes there a little bit. And just like I said, kind of let it over spray over the shoulders. And on the gills there a little bit. And that's just for some, uh, it's some texturing um, and I'll be cleaning it out or I'll be heat setting this just uh, with my blow dryer for a few seconds and then I will uh, clean out my brush and go to my next right, color. So the next color we're going to use is a uh, Createx Pearlized Pearl Lime and what I'm going to do here is uh, so come off the shoulders I'll try to stay away from the gill plate, come off the shoulders and go down. And actually, if you can tell, right about where that dot's at, there is the lateral line. So I want to bring it down to about the lateral line there. I'm going to do it on both sides. Like I said, try to stay off the gill plate. And we're still building layers, building texture, but that's going to fade out of that pearl down into that. So here we go. So I finally got uh, this green done. That's the lime green, uh, pearl lime green or whatever. But um, the problem was, today's the next day, I had some issues with my um, airbrush. I thought I had a bent needle, went 30 mile drive to the nearest Hobby Lobby, bought a new needle, came back, wasn't the issue. Dug around online and found out that the nozzle may be an issue, like the sill in the nozzle. Not a 30 minute drive. Bought the nozzle for the Iwata um, Neo, or Neo for Iwata, whatever they call this. Um, and then while I was there, thought, well, if that's not the issue, still, I'll be out of an airbrush again, and that's more days behind. So I picked up a second one just in case, but I did change the uh, nozzle out, the needle out and it is now shooting so hopefully it stays working also while i was out i uh stopped in the garage and i was talking about the uh the air, first airbrush i bought that i had issues with painting um i grabbed it out of the garage just to show you it's a uh auto lock it came off of amazon and it's a pretty neat little thing i'll show you here real quick um if it would actually spray better That'd be cool. So this is your air compressor. You recharge it with like a standard USB or micro USB, I guess is probably what it is. USB-C, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what USB is. But anyway, it probably tells me somewhere. I think it's a USB-C. And then it's got this big cup. And it's got, it has a bigger cup underneath here, but I'm not going to get into all that. Um, so yeah, that's an auto lock. If I can get the auto focus, there's the auto lock. Um, I probably wouldn't really recommend it. I mean, for the price, you can go buy uh, an Iwata Neo or whatever. Um, you just want to pay for your air tank, then I think that was like $69, so $10 more than the Iwata. So, 30 more bucks, you can have the, the same little air compressor that I have. Um, also, got digging online. I knew that I can make some airbrush cleaner. So I got looking, distilled water, some alcohol, like rubbing alcohol. And uh, I used a, found some clear wind, window like cleaner, all from the Dollar Tree. That's bottles from the Dollar Tree. 
use a third of each. So filtered water, or distilled water, whichever one you want to get. Um, the alcohol and the window cleaner. It smells a little different because actually the window cleaner I think has vinegar in it. But um, yeah, for quick in between sprays and cleanups, it's awesome. Another reason I did that, I don't know if I showed you this or not. This stuff's ten dollars a bottle from Hobby Lobby. This airbrush cleaner, um, it has done great, ten dollars a bottle. But they're, um, yeah, you end up with half a bottle that has no straw. And I'm sure I can take the straw out and buy one and reuse this bottle. But um, I can make two of these bottles for. 375 versus ten dollars for one of this bottle for quick spray downs in between paint colors and just quick cleanups i'll go with this all day long so just a quick rundown here so anyway um my next color i want to throw on there is going to be this transparent i uh, don't know bright green is what it's called yeah transparent bright green and uh i'm gonna shoot this right across the top so it's going to well, let's see here try not to make you sick but that's going to happen so i'm also going to wrap this with this here uh i guess it's not tool but whatever this fabric mesh is i'm going to wrap it i'm going to spray this down across the gold and down to the green to those lateral lines by the way that green was done with the auto lock in case you're curious uh, it's a little splotchy looking compared to like the gold and the white one on, but honestly, it's not too shabby, I don't guess. But uh, so I'm gonna do this on top of that, break it up, and then I'm gonna work on some white and some other stuff I got in the store here. So, so uh, here is the texture that I got from using this mesh stuff. You'll see all the baits if you look at my Instagram, but there's that gold to that uh, lime green. You really can't see much of the fade, but there is definitely some color difference there on the... It just kind of gives the, the bait just a whole different texture. So there's that. Uh, I'll leave this on, clipped on. Until, sorry, I'm getting text messages here if I can get those out there. Anyway, I leave this clipped on until um, I do my heat set with my hair dryer and then I peel a little all off. So if you try that, yeah, if you pull it off while it's wet, just, you're just gonna smear it. So don't do that. My next step, I think, I wanna do is um, I'll use some of this Wicked Colors pearl white and I'm gonna do like the belly pretty heavy all the way up to pretty much let me get this thing to set back here so pretty much all the way up to this lateral line there I'm gonna hit the pearl white there on the gills I'm gonna use it um, not the full gill because if you look at bass they tend to have that uh, dar darker color on top of their head up in the gills and stuff so I'm gonna kind of stay with this I may bring that up a little bit um, so yeah, the belly's gonna be all pearl white. Probably the front right there, bottom lip area, I may have some pearl white. Um, yeah, so that'll be the, my next step. I'll get this cleaned up and we will uh, spray that. So my next color here is a transparent light brown. And the one, uh, I found this mesh was, um, it's kind of like typical Jersey mesh, like. Maybe like a football jersey, but um, it was a shower caddy all of our camper that we never showered in the camper, so the caddy was in great shape. And when I sold the camper, I kept the caddy for some reason, probably because nobody wants your old shower caddy, but um, yeah, so I kept that and uh. Now I'm cutting it up and using pieces of it. So I'm going to shoot right on the back of this anyway with this light brown just to kind of give it that dark ridge that you see on bass. Like kind of overspray a little bit on the shoulders, but uh, I kind of want this green and stuff to kind of work out through there still because it's 
a lot of texture and it's really kind of pretty and cool and I don't want to lose it all. So I'm going to let that uh, down the back and then um, a little bit on the face here too because if you notice bass are always a little darker around the face to the eyes. So I'm going to go with that. There's a couple pieces here kind of sticking out but I'm hoping they won't affect too much. So yeah, I'm gonna give this light brown a go. Hopefully it doesn't ruin my bait at this point because uh, new colors, new techniques, it's all learning. So you can see I uh, did that. I kind of did more solid towards the back and up here in the face, a little more solid brown and then have that pattern going down the uh, spine, kind of over the shoulder there a little bit, right? It's a little uneven, but I'm not really a professional, so. Also, I think I'm not a fan of that brown. It's just a little too uh, poopy for me. So I think I'm gonna take some of my uh, pearl copper here and just kind of mist it on there and try to tame that brown back into this color realm that I have because that copper and that pearlized green and stuff just looks so good to me. And that transparent brown Maybe it's me, but it looks way more opaque than I wanted it to be, so um, I may have sprayed it a little too heavy. Live and learn. Try to save it is the key at this point. Uh, hopefully, it turns out all right. If it doesn't, I've got more blanks, and I know I can get back to the look I had before. So, uh, yep, next step, I'll spray this copper brown or pearl copper and try to You'll keep that texture, I guess, and just kind of see what happens. I don't know. She may be uh, a train wreck. So, um, I think it helped out a lot, you know, with that copper, pearl copper. Um, you can still see that brown texture underneath there, but it just kind of gives it that, brings it back to the, t the color I like, and kind of gives it that back a little bit so yeah I'm cool with it I think it'll be all right so that was that pro car copper and uh my next step is I'm gonna do oh hey <laughs> sorry my next step is I'm gonna do a little bit of um some work here on the gills because my try will just still sorry I don't I'm not using a tripod in here yet I have one I just haven't brought it in but if you look at this one see that little bit of pattern I have here in the gills can't really see on that side as well, it's not focusing, but this side right here, that little bit of pattern there, to me, looks just like that mouth and gill area on a bass. Maybe I'm wrong, but man, I, that's my favorite part about that bait. Sorry for the loud noise. So I'm going to uh, try to do a little, t -t -t replicate that, and uh, yeah. I'm alright with that. And um, just continue on. I feel like I'm almost going too far with this bait. Further than I need to. It's kind of losing maybe too complex and beyond where I'm at. But then again, I'm like pretty cool with it. So maybe not. So a couple more steps and I think it'll be done. I do definitely need to do a little bit of uh, color around I guess the uh, gill throat area and I guess I'm gonna try to work on these gills here and uh, then I'm gonna be a bass without the lateral line stripe the black dotted stripes and actually I got a new black uh, I'm gonna try on that so moving on. So I kind of did this off camera there which I guess I've done it all off camera but so I use this uh, Wicked Gray, and I just put it on the bottom half of the gills there. He set it, and then I went back in with my Wicked Pearl White, and another top of it with, um, again, the same mesh I've been using for the most of the day at night. And that gives that little jaw effect that I like right there. Just a little bit of texture out on the bottom of the, the gills and stuff. It gives it that soft look. I like seeing. Um, so next, 
I think I'm going to do a little color on the bottom of the throat there, maybe some indigo red or some, um, like an umber, burnt umber. And then um, I still got to do my lateral lines. And then I think this is all going to get a light spray of some uh, shifting. Uh, it's kind of a white color. Sorry. It's kind of a white color, but it has a blue to intense violet. Look at that shift. So just a light spray of all, all the way around just to give it that uh, iridescent look that you see on fish. So kind of in and out focus. So I think I may button it all up and come back to you when I'm finished. So this is uh, with my lateral line put on and that red oxide on the belly, which it's kind of like a uh, spawning uh, bass, I guess, even though I'm working with a baby bass. But So I'm almost done with this thing. Um, I'll dip the eyes on and get those glued in place. And I may try to shoot that color shift just slightly over the whole thing just to give it that iridescent look. And when I get done with this, I'll just uh, add a photo in like right here, somewhere here. There we go. There's my hand. I'll add this photo in somewhere at the end of this and uh, there'll be probably multiple angles and you'll see what the finished things looks like. I'm not going to clear coat it in this video. I'll do a video soon of all my clear coats together. But yeah, hope you enjoyed what you saw. This is my um, shot out of baby bass look, kind of square bell crankbait, anyhow. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully, you picked up some something or this gives you a little bit of uh, like courage to try your own if it's something you've been considering. It's really, if you have any kind of artistic, uh, I guess, if you're artistically inclined, go for it. It's not that difficult. Um, it's something you can pick up and learn. Even if you're not, give it a shot. You never know what you may be able to pull off. And just um, look at some pictures and use some references. Like I said, a lot of people say go dark to light on your colors. I Obviously, I didn't do that. I started out with all white and then uh, that gold color and just do my own thing. I don't care. I think it turned out decent, and I think this is going to be, uh, makes one a great bait, at, you know, whoever picks this up at the banquet. So, thanks for joining, guys. This video's a little longer than I wanted it to be. Everything's moving around a whole lot more than I wanted it to, but soon we'll get the tripod set up in here. I got to figure out how I'm going to have it set up with the, um, where it's not really in my way, and in this paint booth that I made. So, thanks for joining, guys.